biblical repentance is an unconditional surrender to Yehovah, Almighty God. Repentance completely changes a person's ways from their ways to obedience to all God's commands. Now we're going to examine the Old Testament requirement for repentance. Yehovah said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments I have written for their instruction. Yehovah is mighty and firm in his purpose. He makes the wicked listen to correction and commands them to repent of evil. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity. But if they do not, they will perish. Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my spirit and make my teachings known to you. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to his people, those who repent of their sins, declares Yehovah. Therefore, say to God's people, this is what Yehovah says, repent, turn from your pagan traditions, and renounce your detestable practices. God's word is living and true. All of it. I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares Yehovah. Repent and live. And in Ezekiel 33, he gives you the best eternal definition of salvation. If a righteous man turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. And if a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. In Habakkuk 3.6, Yehovah says, His ways are eternal. And here's it to his eternal ways. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. If a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. What is just and right is obedience to all God's commandments and laws. In Malachi 3.6, I, Yehovah, do not change, so my people are not destroyed. So if Christians come along and say God's ways changed, then you better be warned that they're telling you an untruth. If a righteous man turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. If a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. Now let's examine the New Testament requirement for biblical repentance. Yeshua says, I tell you, unless you repent, you will perish. Peter, repent and be baptized in the name of Yeshua the Messiah for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the Holy Spirit. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Without repentance, there is no salvation. Everyone who breaks the law sins. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter God's kingdom, but only he who obeys my Father's commands. I tell you, I tell them, I never knew you. Away from me, you law breakers. Yes, this is the New Testament requirement. Here's the church's great commission that Yeshua the Messiah gives his church at the end of his ministry. 
as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Stop breaking God's commands and laws. Obey everything God commanded. In Revelation, about the time of the end, some of the, the very last statement before the return of the Messiah is rest, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues of the sixth trumpet did not repent. They did not stop their pagan worship with idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, with idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Turn to Yehovah before it's too late. This is the final warning. A thorough examination of Scripture reveals that Yehovah, our God, does not change, and He does not change His ways. This book points out that this truth and explains why this is so important. When the Revelation's second seal, Iran War, begins, God's people will suddenly wake up and have to consider if His ways are eternal or He changed something. 